is a sample of a new stamp to be released shortly. What do you think? She looks prettier, doesn't she? Your Majesty, the world is never short of beautiful women. There is only one British queen. Thank you for your honesty, Melbourne. The stamp will be distributed to every country in the British Empire. My dear, where there is sunshine, there is your image. And in China, too. Your Majesty, the Cabinet is looking forward to your support for the motion to send the army to China and for parliamentary support for military appropriations. Now tell me, what kind of a man Lin Zexu is? Well, he's um, strong-willed, unrefined, loyal to his emperor, liable to go to extremes. <laughs> I confess that our knowledge of that thousand-year-old empire is somewhat limited. <laughs> I wish I could see him in Madame Tussauds' museum. <laughs> if I were in Lynn Zexu's position, I would also burn all the opium. But now it's not the opium issue, nor the issue of the lives and properties of a few merchants. It's not even a matter of the dignity of our British flag and royalty. If all nations follow China's example and reject free trade, the British Empire will no longer exist within a year. This is the reason for us to use force. We must teach them a lesson on free trade. Gentlemen, Britain has the responsibility to open up this last and largest territory in the East. I hope you won't tell me one day that this has been done by other countries. The fact is, Whoever gets hold of China will have the entire East. The 19th century. Ying 10. There are 400 million people living in China. If that many people lived in Europe, they would have separated into hundreds of countries years ago. But the Chinese have always been ruled by one emperor and spoken one language. Is this not formidable? For 5,000 years, do you not think that we should be making trade with these people and not war. They have banned the trade. They have treated the British Empire badly. They really should be punished. Order! The order! The honorable member for Hampstead and Highgate. There's one thing I'd like to call your attention to. Britain has the most advanced industry in the world. And China has the biggest market. If every Chinese were to lengthen the lower hem of his shirt by one inch, all the British factories would be kept in business for 30 years. Order, order, order. Order of the house. Sir Alexander.
एक शाम करना था सर ठीक है I know two strange names Confucius and Zhongzi They lived in China over 2000 years ago before Aristotle and Socrates and their thoughts are even more profound than those of Socrates and Aristotle In all probability Mr Speaker it will take us generations to understand the profundity of their thought and to understand China It is a country with a huge wall, thousands of miles long in the north, and a great canal of thousands of miles in the south. Mr. Speaker, it was a great nation, but even in sleep, they are unpredictable. Yes, we may be able to defeat them, but we can never conquer them. I have one ambition left for my life. It is to visit China. But I would rather swim in the Atlantic than sail down in a battleship. for you to present the plight of a group of defenseless british subjects blockaded in an attempt to starve them into submission made to surrender their property in trade which was then destroyed who were then driven from their quarters in guangzhou to be confined aboard our ships at sea without food without water without medicine there to float under the pestilent heat of the sun if you begin... before i set out on my journey to england i was obliged to take leave of my daughter who being sick was unable to travel with me i may never see her alive again and yet Our glorious Union Jack still flaps high on our mast. Gentlemen, your countrymen and your sovereign have been grievously wronged. They look to you for reparation. To that end, your representative in China, Captain Charles Elliot, gave me letters which I have delivered to the Prime Minister. But also give to be delivered to the house. 